everyone welcome back to history saver 1941 and to a special series we are here in gettysburg pennsylvania wow that's so cool to say this battle was one of the bloodiest battles to ever occur in american soul and is the bloodiest battle to ever occur in american soul and not just during the american civil war but for all wars this is one of the most famous places in America. And not just because of the Battle of Gettysburg, but as you can see behind me, what happened after the Battle of Gettysburg and with Abraham Lincoln's famous Gettysburg Address. And this series here on the History Saver, we'll be covering most of the days of the battle, July the 1st to the 3rd, and as many events of that battle as we can get to and as many places of that battle as we can get to. I want to be able to take you along with me on my visit to Gettysburg, tell you a little bit about the history of each place we're visiting, and it's going to be a ride. So join me and let's explore the history of Gettysburg hallowed ground. Okay, so this is what we're looking at right now. This is the visitor's stop, visitor center, here on the uh, Chambersburg Pike, the battlefield of the first day of the Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 1863. And if you can see in a distance right across the field is the Lutheran Cemetery, if you can make it out. It is very tiny, just to the left of the barn face here above the tree line and there's the devil himself on horseback and uh we are here in gettysburg pennsylvania and wow july 1st 1863 this is the battlefield at sunrise or right after sunrise so uh yeah let's continue on all right, so we are in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and I'm right on the Chambersburg Pike. And behind me is where the first shots of the American, or not the American Civil War, it's too early in the morning, but where the first shots of Gettysburg were fired, of uh, the Battle of Gettysburg. On July the 1st, 1863, men of the Peace Division of the Confederate Army were coming down behind me through Chambersburg Pike from the area of Cashtown Inn. Now, a cavalry soldier who was a Union man encountered some of these men and fired his carbine. And he claimed to fame to be the actual first shots of the Battle of Gettysburg. Behind me, you see a very neat house where this happened. And right here, you see where Captain Jones fired the first shots of the Battle of Gettysburg, right here. So it reads, first shot, Gettysburg, July 1st, 1863 at 7.30 a.m. is when he fired this shot. And then right here on the opposite side, fired by Captain Jones, while Sergeant Schaefer's Carbine Company E, 8 Illinois Cavalry. So, and then you've got uh, erected 1886, and then by Captain Jones, Lieutenant Riddler, and Sergeant Schaefer. But as we are here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, this is where the actual first shots of the American, or the Battle of Gettysburg were fired. I need to get more coffee in me this morning. 
But uh, this is where the actual first shots of the Battle of Gettysburg were fired, was fired. And uh, this is something I've been wanting to see since I was a small kid. And uh, it's pretty cool to be right here standing with this little monument commemorating the first shots of the Battle of Gettysburg. And then you've got the original home that was here in this location behind me, which I'm not going to get into all the history of that because we will take up entirely too much time and we have a lot to cover in this video. So let's now head back to the main battlefield of July the 1st, 1863. July 1st, 1863 became one of the most pivotal days in American military history as Confederate troops of Heath's division moved into a small town named Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Now in Gettysburg, 10 roads met, or they do actually still meet in the town square. Why is that important? Well, the armies were just kind of bound by fate to meet there. And the whole thing busted loose on the morning of July the 1st, 1863. Around 7.30 a.m., the first shots of the Battle of Gettysburg were actually fired probably about two to three miles behind me at a little place down a ridge from Harris Tavern. Now, Harris Tavern, where we are right now, just sits right here in this spot. You can kind of see a red roof. I don't know if you can make it out on the video or not behind me, but that is the spot uh, where Harris Tavern actually once set. Now, also, down below here was the toll house and behind me was the Lutheran, uh, Lutheran Seminary. I'm going to turn you guys around and uh, kind of let you see the scenery as I tell you a little bit about the history of what went down here. Okay, so if you're right here on the Chambersburg Pike when you visit Gettysburg, if you come right here to this awesome little visitor center, they have restrooms, that kind of deal in there too, uh, which I took. Uh, very big part of this morning, but this is Stone Avenue right here And then we got some things over here. We'll talk about all that in a minute But uh, this is where the morning of July 1st 1863 This is where the actual Battle of Gettysburg began When Union Cavalry Scouts under General Buford met General Hill's army and event and they were advancing from the west so you had his division driving in, you had his division driving in. They were advancing from the west, and they had an arrival of General Edwell's army that afternoon, and they eventually would drive the Union troops south of the town. But right here is where everything busted loose and took place on the morning of July the 1st, 1863. This is where the actual Battle of Gettysburg physically began. And if you watch the movie Gettysburg, this is depicted within the film itself. And you got some neat cannons here. So in this spot was Battery A, 2nd US Artillery. They were armed with six three-inch rifles such as these cannons that you see to my left and right. And um, they were commanded by Lieutenant John H. Califf. And they arrived on, here on June the 30th. And they arrived that evening from Emmitsburg and they took position. Now July the 1st advanced with cavalry. These guns went into position in this spot and with the right section of the right road and left section on the left and center section with Colonel Gamble's brigade, who was on the right of uh, Fairfield Road. The first Union gun of the battle was fired from the right section and the positions held a severe, uh, was held up under a severe fire until the first corps arrived about 10 a.m on the morning of July the 1st. I know it's hard to hear me because of traffic, but uh, the battery was relieved later that day by Captain J.E. Hall's second main battery. And after being supplied with ammunition, they returned about 3 p.m. Um, but under a front and 
effilating fire, it was retired to a line right in front of Cemetery Ridge. So, if you look here, this is the view of a, that these guns had on July the 1st. Now, actually, not, as lot of, not a whole lot has changed here in Gettysburg. So, pretty cool to see the positions of these artillery guns. Let's head across the road. So, like I said, uh, Union General John Buford and his two brigades of cavalry arrived in Gettysburg just before noon on June the 30th, 1863. Uh, let's head across the road right now while we have a chance. You see this traffic coming across. All right, we're across the road safely. Uh, Buford sent scouts galloping onto various roads. They gathered intelligence uh, concerning the whereabouts of where the Southern Army actually was. That information was then relayed back to him. And that night, most of, the, um, most of the men camped in the fields north and west of the town. But this is the man himself, General or Major General John Fulton Reynolds, right here. So this is Reynolds of the United States Volunteers. Now, when he arrived here in Gettysburg, Ahead of the 1st Army Corps, he met Buford, and they rode to this spot where we are now. When they got to this spot, they assessed the situation, and it was evident that the Confederate forces were advancing, were advancing on Gettysburg in substantial force. In this location, you could Buford would have saw and Reynolds would have saw the Confederate forces coming from that area of the Chambersburg Pike. Now, <clears throat> Buford and Reynolds talked it over, and Reynolds made the bold decision to stand at Gettysburg. He wanted to make a stand right here. This is where the decision was made, we're going to stand our ground right here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. He sent orders to hurry his men into position and sent aid to General Meade in Tannytown and he requested that the rest of the army march to support. The monuments at this site honor General Buford and Reynolds and acknowledge their role in helping shape the course of that battle. The Union Army enjoyed the initial success, but the Confederates received far more reinforcements throughout the day. Ultimately, some 28,000 Southerners and four divisions outflanked and smashed the lines of some 20,000 Union troops within two corps. The Southerners won a great victory on July the 1st, 1863, but the Union Army rallied that evening on Cemetery Hill, which is just south of the town. It was one of the bloodiest days of the American Civil War. July the 1st and the battle that raged here produced 16,000 casualties. It is a surreal feeling being on this field where this all happened on July the 1st, 1863. This is the spot where Reynolds and Buford said, we're going to make our stand against Confederates who are advancing up this ridge line, up the Chambersburg Pike. And this is where those two great armies met. And this is where three days of the bloodiest fighting in American history occurred. Okay, so in front of me, you see the man himself This is John Buford. And it was from this crest which the first artillery gun was fired. That gun is right here. Okay, so we are 
walking right now i wanted to take a look at a couple of monuments before we leave this location this is the second main battery i believe july 1st this is our left flank and second main battery Hall's uh, division first brigade second division first corps july 1st 1863 pretty cool monument but we're going to actually head across the road i want to take a look at this one this morning guys okay so now we're making our way across the road finally back on the side we need to be on and I want to take a look at this monument right here which is cold to get to very chilly morning to me anyway and this is the left flank of the 149th regiment they carried into action 450 men, killed and mortally wounded 66, um, wounded 159, captured or missing. Let's see, total 336 men. They mustered in August the 30th, 1862, mustered out June the 24th, 1865. And this is 149th Pennsylvania Infantry. First Regiment, Bucktail Brigade, 2nd uh, Brigade, 3rd uh, Division, 1st Corps. Check out how neat the statue is. This, is real <laughs> okay it is a well that's pretty cool but uh why were they called the butt tail brigade well on the side of their hats they wore a butt tail pretty neat to see this and then they got the crest on the back and these guys were moved here on july the second um in support of the left and they remain on picket all night in the morning of the third so the Buckdale, uh, Bucktail Brigade was moved here on the 2nd, and this is where they remain. But on July the 1st, this regiment held its position from 11.30 a.m. until the corps retired, and it resisted several assaults of the enemy, making two successful charges to a railroad cut, and they charged from the front and rear under fire. So these guys saw a lot of action on July the 1st and July the 2nd. Pretty cool. So in front of me, you guys are probably wondering what this weird white building in the middle of Phil is. This is actually the Edward McPherson Farm, hence the name McPherson Ridge. And it was occupied by the Slintz family prior to the battle, and the farm saw heavy fighting and was actually used as a hospital as well. The original house and outbuildings buildings were burned in the 1890s, but the barn that you see now was restored and sold to the park. And we'll put up a picture of after the fighting. I think it was that this was taken after the fighting uh, from somewhere around around this same angle, almost I think. But uh, this is a pretty cool place to see up up close and personal. Is a McPherson barn. So this was used as a hospital, and it saw a lot of fighting in this location. I mean, look, it's in the middle of everything. Pretty cool. And this is right here on the McPherson Farm. This is 150th Pennsylvania Infantry Monument of the 2nd Brigade, 3rd Division of the 1st Corps. And behind it on the ridge is a Lutheran Seminary. And then to the left, you see the McPherson Barn there. And one of the things I thought was pretty cool was this little aspect right here on McPherson's Ridge. Kind of a retaining pod. I just thought it was pretty neat. So this is the left flank of the 150th Pennsylvania Division. And this is McPherson's Ridge. All right, guys, so we are on McPherson's Ridge and I'm gonna turn you around. I want you to see this uh, because this is pretty neat to see in person. Everything here is neat to see in person. That is the Lutheran Seminary right behind the statue uh, straight ahead. but. At roughly 9.30 a.m. on July the 1st, two Confederate brigades of General Henry Heath's division advanced from Hare's Ridge, which was several hundred yards north of this location here behind my little rental car here. And they, um, they were north through the Chambersburg Pike, which is the highway running right there for reference. 
Now, General Joseph Davis's brigade of 2,300 Southerners faced off against 2,000 men of Union General Lysander Cutler's brigade who were just south of the pike in this general location. General James Arthur, who was um, had men from Alabama and Tennessee, marched across a creek called Willoughby's Run, and they moved up McPherson Ridge, which is here, and surged to the Hearst Woodlot, which is located right in here. Union General Solomon Murder's 1,000. 800 man Iron Brigade arrived just in time to gauge Archer's 1,200 men. In the heavy fighting, the men from Wisconsin, Michigan, and Indiana drove the Southerners back across Willoughby's Run and, in the process, captured a horde of prisoners, including General Arthur himself, which is pretty cool. Um, could you imagine doing all that and getting captured? I couldn't imagine even being captured. I mean, this is the ground they had to defend. And one of the accounts I read was when the cavalrymen that were here in Gettysburg were actually defending these ridges. If you can see, it kind of drops off right here, goes down a little valley and then comes back up. And that's the way it pretty much is all across here, which makes an interesting tactic. Now, during the lull in the fighting, more Yankees arrived, fortified uh, the positions west of the town, and in the afternoon, the assault, General Heath's other two brigades of under General James Pettigrew and Colonel J.M. Brockenborough uh, drove back Colonel Roy Stone's Pennsylvania Bucktails from the ridge, um, which we are standing on right now. So the Bucktails, whose statue we saw just over here, um, this kind of gives you a general idea of where they were. The statue's over there, okay? This is the location where they actually were, and they were driven back from this ridge. And they were forced in doing that to abandon this woodlot. The woods and fields around us that where we're standing right now were strong with dead and dying. It was one of the deadliest actions in the Civil War's bloodiest battle. So this is one of the deadliest actions in the Battle of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. This battle had the highest numerical loss of any Union regiment during the battle with a 24th Michigan. The 24th Michigan suffered two, uh, 360 casualties in this area alone. And here's a um, picture, uh, 1863 photo of McPherson's Ridge looking towards Seminary Ridge. So that's somewhere right in this general location here. Now, we're going to and look at a man while we're here. This is a statue that you see in front of us of 69-year-old John Burns, who was the former town constable of Gettysburg, and he was a veteran of the War of 1812. On an afternoon of July the 1st, he left his home in Gettysburg, grabbed himself a, gu a gun, and joined the ranks of the Northern Army along McPherson's Ridge, who were right here in this location. He was wounded and captured during the fighting. He survived the battle and became a national celebrity. And there's a very famous photograph of this man that Matthew Brady took in front of his home with his gun. And he had all kinds of reporters coming to um, <laughs> talk to him and all of that good stuff. So that's old Mr. Burns. Very cool. So this is McPherson Ridge and I'm just gonna take you guys through uh, the Hearst Woods as I'm driving through here. Very cool to see this in person. This is awesome. So I want to show you guys one of the things I've been wanting to see, and that is this monument right here. This is the monument to the 
Iron Brigade, which consisted of the 7th Wisconsin, 6th Wisconsin, 2nd Wisconsin, 19th Indiana, and 24th Michigan. And this is a list of all the engagements. I'm not going to read them off. You can pause the video and do that. But this was their position of July the 2nd and 3rd. Or rather, they were on Cups Hill on July the 2nd and 3rd. But uh, this was to their action on July the 1st. And sometimes it can get kind of confusing. Of course, I've never been here before. But I'm just trying to place the places. And that's one of the things that's hard to do. But uh, they were here on July the 1st, but they also were on Cups Hill on the 2nd and 3rd. Um, but you can just pause the video if you want and read some of that. And we're going to continue on because we got a lot more to see and a lot to cover and no time to do it. So this is Hearst Woods. This is where the 1st Brigade was. And I'm just riding through showing you guys some because we can't see every single thing here in Gettysburg in one day. It just isn't going to happen. Um, this would take multiple trips. But this is the position of the 24th Michigan. Like I said, the Iron Brigade consisted of many different um, units and regiments. And this was where the 24th Michigan was in the Herbs Woods so pretty neat to see this and then on the opposing side of the road is where archer's brigade was and the troops of the north carolina all right so where we're at right now is probably one of the spots i wanted to see most on the battlefield if you look behind me that is a lutheran seminary that was the lookout but major john reynolds or Major General John Reynolds, rather, was taking up position in this portion of the battlefield right here. Now, Archer's Brigade of Confederates, as they started moving towards the woods, the fighting was getting very intense in this spot. The men who were here started to pull back and retreat back towards the seminary. Now, Reynolds rode up to this spot right here and said, for God's sakes, men, forward. God, for God's sakes, man, go forward. Push these men out of these woods. We've got to take these woods. As he turned to look back towards the seminary, he was shot. He was shot in the neck, and he was dead before he hit the ground. Now, one of the soldiers a year after battle come back here and marked the tree in R, marking the spot where Reynolds actually died. But this is where Major John Reynolds actually passed, and you can see the mound of dirt here with his monument here and this is reynolds woods these are the woods that reynolds was trying to take and holy bananas is it weird just to be here and as you can tell it rained a very lot yesterday so i'm not going too far in here because this ground is soaking but uh these are Reynolds Woods. Some squirrels playing. Silent now, but deadly then. Okay, so as we continue this little small tour around the battlefield of Gettysburg, I want to remind you, you can't cover the Battle of Gettysburg in an hour, you can't cover the Battle of Gettysburg. In two hours, you can't cover the Battle of Gettysburg in three days. Gettysburg is a really in-depth battle. It takes time, it takes a lot of reading, and we may never know exactly what happened. But um, if you look behind me, this is very cool. This is the Lutheran Seminary. And if you've seen the movie Gettysburg, well, you've seen this. 
this is where those scenes were actually filmed and that is pretty neat okay so as we look back towards this way this is the lutheran seminary this is seminary ridge and very cool now i was wrong earlier when i called uh right here we we're just on the other side of the mcpherson farm here this is reynolds woods hearst woods is a little ways down that way so i want to correct that now that was actually reynolds woods like i said it's kind of easy to get kind of confused um, when you're actually here in person but abner doubleday the major general abner doubleday on july the 1st 1863 when reynolds was killed he took command now you gotta you gotta think about it he didn't know what reynolds was going to do he didn't know what his plans were so he had to come up establish his headquarters about 230 yards um here near the pike and he had to take command of all the units and try to hold these woods. Well, they weren't able to do that and they were forced into a retreat. But this is the Lutheran Seminary. And if you see the fence right here, a very, very famous photograph was taken in this general vicinity. And uh, we'll pop that up right now.